Welcome CrossFit resident. You are watching a waste reduction video on the basics of home vermicomposting. This is a resource that is sponsored by the City of Carlsbad's Sustainable Materials Management Division, and it's made especially for you. I am Lucian, and I am your guiding host. Did you know that lately we've been wasting about 1.3 billion tons of food every year in the world? That is quite a lot. A lot of that food waste actually comes from our homes. You know, that little pack of broccoli that you got, you used a little bit of it and maybe you forgot the rest of it in the fridge and it went bad. Or this kind of stuff that's inevitable, you know, ends of a carrot maybe that you're cutting so you can use in your soup or maybe your salad like I do or some peels of a beet or a potato, ends of a lettuce. In general, a lot of this food scraps, kitchen scraps, end up in the landfill. That's where they produce a lot of greenhouse gases and other kind of pollution. There were a lot of resources, a lot of materials, and a lot of man hours that went into producing food like this. And that's all wasted, plus the associated pollution. The good news is, Instead of throwing all of these things at the landfill where they produce so many other problems, we can actually compost these food scraps at home and produce nutrient-rich compost, nutrient-rich fertilizer that can really help the health of our plants, like my beautiful grape here. And maybe if you don't have a garden at home, you can give it to a school garden, to a community garden, or maybe even some plants in the park. The compost we make at home is nutrient-rich and is teeming with life. Life that does magic in the soil, helping us grow amazingly healthy plants. One of the easiest ways we can compost at home is vermicomposting. At home, vermicomposting is the practice of composting kitchen scraps with the help of decomposing worms and other small microorganisms that are found in a vermicompost system for the house, just like this one. Vermicomposting is one of the fastest and most effective way to compost kitchen scraps at home. The worms will produce nutrient-rich compost almost every day while reducing your waste that instead of going to the landfill, now you're making it into compost. So what do you do? Well, the first thing you wanna do is to get yourself a little container like this, a little bucket, have it somewhere in your kitchen and start saving your kitchen scraps in a container just like this. You'll actually start the process already. Some decomposing microorganisms will start the work that the worms will finish later. I usually fill one of these in five to seven days and that's when I go and feed my worms. In your vermicompost system, you should be using decomposing worms. These are different than the earthworms. The decomposing worms usually are either red wigglers or night crawlers. Decomposing worms are specialized to decompose organic matter, such as your kitchen scraps. You should also know that inside of your vermicompost system, you also have other type of microscopic microorganisms that are doing decomposition also. So when you are starting and managing a bin, you are making sure that you are creating the right environment, both for the worms and those decomposing microorganisms that are working to transform your kitchen scraps into nutrient rich fertilizer for the garden. So what are the right environmental conditions for a vermicompost system to thrive and for you to be in this journey for the long run? What you feed them is very important. They are mostly vegans, so they like raw veggies and raw fruits. If, just in case the food is cooked that you're adding to your system, make sure it's not heavy in oils or dressing or any kind of sauces. That might hurt the system. They also enjoy coffee grounds and tea bags. You can also add pits of avocados and or mangoes. They actually love those. Bedding. Bedding is really important. This is where the worms and the microorganisms are living in and 
also consume. So that can be newspapers because in general it's recycled paper and it's printed with soy-based inks, therefore not adding any chemicals to the system. Cardboard also, it's a pretty raw form of paper, which is very similar to the kind of stuff that the worms are living in and consuming in nature. Make sure you don't add printing paper. Printing paper is bleached. And what does bleach do? It definitely kills bacteria and microorganisms. And we don't want that. Also, glossy paper has a lot of chemicals in it. So don't use that in your system. Find other ways to recycle it or reduce the amount that you get at home of that kind of material. The bedding will be both at the bottom when you start the system and will always be on top to cover the food waste and the worms that you are introducing to the system and live there. Moisture. Moisture is very important. It helps the worms breathe and also helps them navigate the system. Moisture also helps with the decomposition of other microorganisms that are inside of your vermicompost. So what you want to do is to make sure that the consistency and the moisture inside of your system is like a wrung out sponge. You can achieve that, first of all, by adding a lot of your food scraps that have moisture already inside of them, and by sometimes adding some water to the system. Dryness can really hurt your vermicompost bin and it can really hurt all the life that exists in there. Grit. Grit is very important. Just like chickens, worms need a greedy matter to consume and clean out their system. That can be in a form of a handful of sand or soil from your garden or if you eat eggs, eggshells are great for the system. Airflow. Airflow is very important. This system achieves it through the holes that we drilled on the bottom of the top bin and with the lid that is loosely fitted. The location of your bin is important also. You don't want it to be exposed to extreme heat or extreme light. We chose this kind of bin here because it's pretty opaque, still leaving some light going in and you're able to see what's happening inside. However, the best locations to have this kind of bin, almost because of its size, you can have it under your sink, in the garage, and if you put it outside, make sure there is no direct sun. With food, make sure that you give it mostly raw food, and you don't give it processed foods such as cheeses, meats, or breads. You also want to stay away from onions and citrus. Now remember, the worms will double their population every three to four months in the right conditions. This bin can host about four pounds of worms. So, you, so if you start with one pound, you'll have four pounds in about a year. Well, that's a good thing. They will possibly stop reproducing and keep their population pretty balanced considering the type of food and the type of bedding that you're adding to your bin. You can share it with neighbors or start a secondary bin. There's many ways that you can use the vermicompost in your garden directly or by making vermicompost teas. I will discuss that in the second video. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found value and understand more of what's happening in a vermicompost system and what you need to have to get it started. And in the next video, I will show you how to do that, how to start your vermicompost bin how to manage it, how to feed it, how to troubleshoot problems, and even how to harvest and use that vermicompost. I will see you soon. Again, remember, I am Lucian, your guiding host, and this resource is sponsored by the City of Carlsbad's Sustainable Materials Management Division. Enjoy.